What's up, vinyl community? Welcome back to Dads on a Budget Vinyl. My name is Mark. I appreciate you hanging out, and I'm really happy to jump on this thread that Sam St. John started, uh, the Americana Vinyl 2024 tag. I think it's really cool. I've said on my channel before, we don't talk about Americana music enough. Uh, for me, there's Americana uh, and alt country, you know, which would be bands like Uncle Tupelo and the Bottle Rockets and, you know, uh, uh, where you've really got elements of country and punk and uh, roots music, rockabilly, that type of thing coming together. And then Americana, which in my mind, you know, it, it, it just encompasses so many different genres. Uh, of course, you've got uh, country and bluegrass and blues and folk, but you've also got like Cajun Zydeco and stuff from south of the border like Tex-Mex and and stuff like that. Uh, typically, the uh, instrumentation is going to lean more acoustic. You've got plenty of guitars and fiddles and banjos and dobros and pedal steels. And uh, typically, vocally, uh, uh, you're going to have more of a focus on the singing and the harmonies and that type of thing. Uh, but wow, what a what a all encompassing genre Americana is. And uh, I love being a part of the tag. So let's dive in. Uh, there's 20 items. Uh, the first one was uh, favorite Americana artist. Um, you know, I tried to think about, you know, you know, you've got people like Bob Dylan and Neil Young and even like Bruce Springsteen and from across the pond, uh, like Elton John and, um, you know, people that have done albums that would squarely fall into the Americana uh, box but that I don't really consider Americana artists. So that's kind of the way that I tried to look at it. Uh, for me, number one Americana artist, probably saw it laying there, uh, the Jayhawks, Hollywood Town Hall, but just the Jayhawks in, in general, I picked this album. Um, it's not even really my favorite Jayhawks record, but it's definitely uh, my favorite Americana type uh, uh, Jayhawks record. Uh, they are a band also that has delved into, like their past couple of records, Paging Mr. Proust, XOXO, certainly aren't Americana records, but wow, their first four or five certainly are. Uh, Gary Lewis's um, uh, and Mark Olson's harmonies and their songwriting, their instrumentation, fantastic. Uh, Mark Olson left the band to, to spend more time with his then wife, Vic Williams, and, and uh, their side project, the Honey Creek Dippers, I believe it was. Uh, the burden fell squarely on Gary Lewis's shoulders uh, to carry on or not, and he did. Uh, Rainy Day Music is a fantastic record. Also, it's got plenty of Americana type stuff with like Tailspin and Save It for a Rainy Day. Uh, Pretty Little Hairdo, Don't Do What It Used To. What a line, right? Um, and then uh, Mark came back for Mockingbird Time and then left, and the Jayhawks have carried on since then as a four-piece. But I love them. I love everything that they do. I'm all in on the Jayhawks. Uh, next up, banjo on the cover. Well, I've got some dueling banjos on the cover, or uh, one banjo on the cover, but dueling banjos, music from uh, the movie Deliverance. Uh, this record turned on a lot of hippies to uh, acoustic music, bluegrass music. Uh, this is fantastic. Of course, it's uh, Marshall Brickman and Eric Weisberg. This was produced by Joe Boyd. And Joe Boyd, you know, for all of his work with uh, Incredible String Band and Fairport Convention and Nick Drake, and uh, later on, even like R.E.M. And, and the huge hit that he had with Maria Moldar with Midnight at the Oasis. He's still really, uh, as far as like chart topping success, dueling banjos was pretty much number one for him. I had to have a runner up. Uh, this is Earl Scruggs and the Earl Scruggs Review live at Kansas State. This album will tattoo your brain. It's fantastic. The playing is phenomenal. Uh, my good buddy, John White, used to juggle. He said you couldn't juggle if you couldn't juggle the Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Uh, but this album is fantastic. And uh, I don't think the Sex Pistols ever did anything as punk as uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown on this record. It's just phenomenal. Uh, next up, Harmony. I'm going with Harmony by Bill Frissel. Um, Harmony is the name of this record on Blue Note. Harmony is also the name of the musical collective. Uh, you've got Petra Hayden, 
Bill Frissel, uh, Luke Bergman, and Hank Roberts. Uh, they went into the studio to record basically instrumental stuff. Uh, Bill realized how well their voices blended together, and they came out with this record. Is it Americana? Uh, not necessarily, but it's not jazz or anything else either. It's Bill Frissel, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, there are, I think, about seven or eight originals on here, and there, there are some covers uh, on the street where you live, Where Have All the Flowers Gone, Red River Valley. Uh, it's just fantastic, and the harmony singing is utterly ethereal. Uh, Runner-up in this category as well, just in case you guys wouldn't technically let me count, uh, that record, this is the seldom scene. This is live at the cellar door. Somebody else mentioned the seldom scene. Their harmonies are absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is a this is a really really good record. Catches them at the peak of their playing. Uh, John Duffy, John Starling, Mike Aldridge, Ben Eldridge, and uh, Tom Gray. Uh, but their harmonies are fantastic. Uh, they do some great covers. Um, Let's see, you've got uh, Baby Blue, the excellent Dylan track. You've got Steve Goodman, City of New Orleans, uh, Seldom Seen. Great record, great harmony singing. Uh, favorite female Americana artist, wow. Lucinda Williams, Katie Lang, Rhiannon Giddens, uh, Gillian Welch. I mean, I love all of those voices for different reasons, uh, but I have to go with Miko Case. I have to go with Nico Case. Uh, Fat Bearded Guy also showed uh, Nico Case and the album uh, Blacklisted. And uh, I loved, I love that. Uh, by the way, real quick, I loved your video. I thought it was killer. Uh, you showed vinyl, CDs, and even cassettes. And I thought that was so cool because this Americana thread, I've watched probably a dozen of the videos. Um, and it seems like we really are more into actually talking about the music and what it means to us um, <clears throat> than what copy it is or what format it is or whether it's an original or a mono or stereo or whatever. Uh, we're really talking about the music. Um, I got a Paste Magazine music comp that had Deep Red Bells on it, and I could not believe it. I listened to it probably five or six times easy in a row. And that song went on a lot of mixtapes that I made uh, uh, there for, for a while. Uh, that song is on this record. Um, along uh, with Nico, you've also got uh, Hal Gelb from Giant Sand. You've got Joey Burns and John Covertino from Calexico. Uh, you've got members of the Sadies. Uh, this is just a, it's a fantastic record. Her voice is as big as Texas. It's huge and round and full and utterly beautiful. And you know, we've heard big voices before, but it's not big in like a Janis Joplin uh, or a Joe Cocker kind of way. It's just full and it's amazing. Nico Case. Uh, and then I had, to, I had to show a Lucinda Williams record as well. And everybody showed uh, Car Wheels or, uh, you know, uh, World Without Tears. This is live at the Fillmore. Um, this is, she's got a fantastic band. Gurf Morlix is on lead guitar. It's got songs from all three of those records plus other stuff. This is a fantastic record. Uh, this is on uh, Lost Highway Records. Beautiful. Um, I haven't seen it out and about very often. I, I think this one's kind of on up there right now. I think high end on Discogs is about 300 bucks, uh, but you can stream it or get the CD or whatever. The music is fantastic. Uh, favorite acoustic cover, uh, Gypsy Kings, uh, Hotel California, fantastic band, fantastic song, fantastic cover. Most of you guys know that, and you guys know The Big Lebowski. I've talked about it on my soundtracks video. Um, I had to have a runner-up on this just in case you guys wouldn't let that count, and so I'm going with The Gourds. Uh, from Go Get Your Shine Box, you've got Ziggy Stardust, which is fantastic, and uh, uh, the Snoop Dogg song, Gin and Juice. Um, the Gourds, you know, they kind of got known for those two songs. Um, the Gourds discography is deep and full and amazing. In one word, I would consider them authentic, uh, but they are just a lot of fun, a really, really good band. Um, Check out a song of theirs if you want something that's a little bit less tongue-in-cheek than those two covers. 
uh, check out uh, The Dying of the Pines. They do a fantastic, that's just a great, great song. Uh, let's see, artists that I'd like to see put out an album in 2024. I'm going Bob Dylan. I, I love Bob Dylan. I'm all in on Bob Dylan. Uh, but man, for about the last 10, 15 years, he has really been killing it. Uh, what with his standard series, um, anything that he comes out with in the bootleg series, and then any type of studio stuff that he releases, I'm all in. This is Rough and Rowdy Ways. I uh, thought it was fantastic. Truth returned to form. Uh, lyrically, I think it's one of his best albums in a long time. The sound is fantastic. And so, yeah, I'm all in, Bob. Let's have some Bob 2024. I think that would be a, a great thing. Mm. Sweet. <coughs> Sweet tea. Okay, let's see. Favorite of 2023. So, Mazzy already talked about it. I can't help but mention it as well. <laughs> I tried to grab something different. I just can't do it. I love this record. I love Rufus Wainwright, but even if I didn't, I mean, I'm all in on the Wainwright family. I mean, I've got Loudon Wainwright records. I've got Rufus Wainwright. I've got Kate and Ann McGarrigal. Um, I've got Martha Wainwright stuff. I mean, I, I love all of that. and I love Rufus. But when I saw that this had Andrew Bird, and you guys have I've done an Andrew Bird video. If you don't know him, please check him out. Uh, and Chris Stills, uh, Stephen Stills' son. Uh, and then I saw that they were going to be together on the Neil Young song, Harvest. I was like, yeah, I was all in. Bought this. Uh, I have not been disappointed. It's a fantastic record, not just in the Americana vein. I mean, this is easily uh, the favorite record that I bought in 2023, not just that came out in 2023. Uh, the next thing would be an acoustic Beatles tune. Sam went with White Album. Most people went with Rubber Soul. I'm going with the White Album as well. Uh, we don't need to talk a whole lot about that, but it's got, you know, gosh, man, uh, Mother Nature's Son, Julia, uh, Rocky Raccoon, Blackbird. I mean, what a, what a fantastic record, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, next up would be Heartbreaking Ballad. Well, nobody's talked about this guy, and I know he has a bad rap, but does anybody write a better heartbreak ballad than Ryan Adams? Uh, this is Demolition. I mean, on here, he's got uh, Cry on Demand, where he literally makes you cry on demand, even though you know that's what's coming. You know that's what he's trying to do, and yet uh, you've got uh, You'll Always Be the Same, Chin Up, Cheer Up, Tennessee Sucks, Dear Chicago. Man, I love that track, too. Uh, so yeah, Sad Bastard Music, Ryan Adams is right on up there. I want to mention, and I didn't grab anything, but Ben Weaver, uh, if you don't know Ben Weaver, absolutely fantastic, and Damien Gerardo, both of those guys, wonderful. Uh, drinking Music, I had to grab Whiskey Town. I mean, you've got, you know, whiskey in the name of the band, but again, uh, a Ryan Adams uh, project, uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, uh, late 90s. Uh, man, it's all on here. I wish Whiskey Town could have stayed together a little bit longer. I know that uh, Ryan Adams didn't want to be pigeonholed as an alt-country guy for the rest of his life, and, and he is prolific enough and all over the place enough. Uh, but, 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 man, this album is fantastic. I would easily give it four and a half out of five. Uh, uh, and I, I love, this is the follow-up to Faithless Street. Um, I love this, those two records and Pneumonia, the one that came out afterwards, but this is fantastic. And just about every song on here is either about drinking or, you know, was written while he was drunk or, or, or recorded while he was drunk or whatever. But anyway, Whiskey Town, Stranger's Almanac, excellent, excellent record. Uh, illustrated album cover, got to go with Billy Strings. Uh, this is Billy Strings' Home. Um, on that last category about... Uh, favorite record that came out in 2023, it would be the Loudon, uh, I mean the uh, Rufus Wainwright, but favorite record I purchased in 2023, uh, that would be this guy right here. It's fantastic. Every time I listen to it, I hear something new. Uh, guitar playing, acoustic guitar playing, prodigy, flat picking, arpeggios, uh, everything, string bending, the whole nine yards. It's all on here. It's a great record, Billy Strings. Missed him live last year. Can't wait to get another chance. Um, acoustic from a non-acoustic band or artist. This one was weird for me, and I 
almost did what everybody else did, which was hop on the MTV unplugged train, even started to pull a uh, sound gardens down on the upside because they use a banjo on Ty Cobb and they use a national steel on Burden in My Hand, but I had to go also with Elvis Costello. Um, he's not someone that I would typically think of as being Americana or acoustic. Um, and yet here he is, T-Bone Burnett produced. And of course, uh, you know, Elvis had done, you know, the country covers album, uh, Almost Blue and several different things that would fall into the Americana category. Someone else mentioned King of America, which is fantastic as well. But man, when I heard Down Among the Wine and Spirits, on this record, I was slayed. I was hooked. I was like, man, that's fantastic. Uh, bought it first on CD and then suck up, uh, saw it out the vinyl. But uh, the, the reworking of Complicated Shadows on this record is fantastic. She Handed Me Her Mirror, How Deep Is the Red, uh, Sulfur to Sugarcane, Red Cotton. This is just a, it's a fantastic record. And when I see Elvis Costello rankings, um, this one's not usually too high. It's usually like uh, middle of the pack, and I don't really get that. I think it's a great record. Maybe it's a little bit of, bit of uh, T-Bone, Burnett, Overkill, Backlash. I'm not sure, but I think it's fantastic. Elvis Costello, Sulfur to Sugar Cane. Okay, uh, Supergroup. Well, I'm going with the original American Supergroup. Crosby, Sills, Nash & Young. That's not an Americana record. Well, man, you know, you've got Stephen Stills in his Confederate general's uniform. You've got uh, plantation owner Neil Young, both of them from Buffalo Springfield. You've got uh, Greg Reeves dressed up as a, a hip Indian cowboy, I guess. You've got farm peasant worker Graham Nash from the Hollies. You've got David Crosby from the Birds. Uh, with his buckskin, you know, frontiersman outfit on. And then you've got Dallas Taylor over here as like a, a Confederate uh, soldier. Um, but yeah, um, an Americana, so Country Girl, which is one of my favorite Americana tracks of all time um, with the three movements. And then you've also got Helpless, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm going to count this super group. Um, if I had to, if someone said that didn't count, I would go with Goat Rodeo. We were talking about them just a, a little while ago. Chris Thiele, Yo-Yo Ma, Stuart Duncan, Ed Gilmeyer. There's, there's really not anyone within the genres that we've been talking about. Uh, those cats have played with everybody. So that definitely constitutes a super group, I guess. All right, next up would be I Never Got to See Live. Man, Johnny Cash. Never Got to See the Man in Black. Uh, what a voice, what an attitude, what a persona, uh, what a presence. Uh, I would have loved to have seen him. I would have loved to have seen him with that crack band. Of course, this is him at uh, Folsom Prison, uh, his interplay with June, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, I'd have loved to have seen Johnny Cash. Uh, got to see Willie Nelson, man, he was fantastic. If you haven't seen Willie, go see Willie, okay. Uh, who would I like to see live? Oh, we haven't talked about the Punch Brothers yet or, or uh, Goat Rodeo yet. I want to see Chris Thiele in the worst kind of way. He's the dude in the middle there. Mandolin Prodigy can play any type of music, has played with anybody, started off as a kid um, making music with the Watkins Twins in uh, uh, Nickel Creek, had some success with that band. Uh, Punch Brothers uh, put this band together. You know, you've got Miracle Kill Me and quite a few. I mean, all of these cats are masters of their instruments. And this is like a progressive bluegrass. Uh, they're just as likely to play Bach or Beethoven or Radiohead as they are a traditional bluegrass uh, uh, tune. And then Chris Thiele's also in with the uh, Goat Rodeo, which is the uh, Stuart Duncan, Edgar Meyer on double bass, uh, Chris Thiele on mandolin and Yo-Yo Ma on cello and a couple of other things. Fantastic. It's almost like Baroque bluegrass. Uh, but those records, uh, Goat Rodeo and Not Our First Goat Rodeo, those records are fantastic. So yeah, I'd love to see Chris Thiele. He came through Birmingham, I guess a year or two back. Uh, tickets were pretty high, but I still wish I had, had bit the bullet and gone ahead and gone. 
Uh, let's see, I'd like to see, that's Chris Thiele, seen the most, easily the drive-by truckers. <clears throat> Uh, band from North Alabama, of course, cut their teeth in Athens, Georgia, but definitely a Southern band, uh, Patterson Hood, David Hood's son. We won't go too deep into any of this because I'd really kind of like to do a, a drive-by trucker showcase with my friend Bobby, uh, get together and talk about some truck truckers. But uh, Patterson Hood, Mike Cooley, uh, uh, Jason Isbell on this record, um, Three wonderful singers, three wonderful songwriters, three wonderful guitar players. Uh, Drive By Truckers definitely were my favorite band for about five or six years running. This record is fantastic. Um, February 14, Gravity's Gone, Aftermath USA, Goodbye. I love that track. Wednesday, Space City. Uh, Patterson closes it up with a world of hurt. Uh, talk about sad bastard music, but these guys are fantastic. Um, a little bit too political for my taste these days, but that's just my opinion. Don't beat me up for it too bad. Still love them as a band. Um, fantastic stuff. Drive by truckers. I've probably seen them seven or eight times. I've seen Patterson, uh, two or three times solo and I've seen Mike solo. So, uh, and of course, uh, yeah, anyway, drive by truckers. Fantastic. Uh, seen the most duet. So a lot of people, I mean, I loved every pick that I saw when it came to duet. I'm going shovels and rope. Love these guys. Um, I knew of Carrie Ann Hurst. Uh, she came out, uh, she had a, a song on the True Blood soundtrack, the HBO, uh, uh, series, which was fantastic. Um, and I, and I knew of her, the work with, that she's done with her husband, Mike, as well. And I had several shovels and rope uh, records and CDs, but I didn't really appreciate them until my wife and I went to see them last year. Um, they are fantastic live. They both sing. They both write. They both play. Uh, they both play guitar, piano, drums. Uh, just really phenomenal. Okay? And they put on a heck of a show. They were in the middle of a, a brutal tour at the time and they still they put on a, a heck of a show. Uh, five lesser known artists. Okay, so I, man, I tried to whittle it down. So I'm gonna mow through these pretty quick. We talked about the Avett Brothers. This is emotionalism. I love the Avett Brothers. I probably burned myself out on them because I love them so much when I first saw it, when I first heard them. I've seen them live two or three times. Um, love Scott and Seth Avid, and once they added Joe Kwan on the cello, Bob Crawford on the bass, uh, love the Avid brothers. If you don't know them, uh, the Dexatines, man, the Dexatines talk about raw energy, authenticity, sound, uh, uh, songwriting. They are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, they've got half a dozen records out. One of them was produced by uh, the aforementioned Patterson Hood. Um, this is my favorite. This has uh, Naked Ground, Neil Armstrong, Downtown, Maker's Mound, uh, and one of my favorite Dexatine tracks, Outside the Loop. This is a great record. If you don't know the Dexatines, check them out. How about the Scud Mountain Boys? This is Massachusetts. Uh, this is going to remind you of, uh, uh, let's see, maybe some Bonnie Prince Billy, maybe some Felice Brothers, uh, but low-key, lo-fi but beautiful and haunting, Scud Mountain Boys. Uh, Bird Dog, kind of the same, kind of more of the same, a little bit more desert noir, um, but this is a phenomenal record as well. Uh, next up would be The Bad Livers, Don't Let the Name Fool You. Uh, I know with the name like The Bad Livers and a look like that, uh, they're not meant to be taken too seriously, but boy, can these cats play. And I mean, kind of like the Gourds, kind of like, you know, authentic hillbilly, but absolutely wonderful performers. Um, if you play guitar and you're a fan of anyone from like John Fahey to Tony Rice or uh, it just any, any one of those cats, um, hard picked, flat picked guitar, fast, furious, accurate, killer, uh, brand new hat check out the Bad Livers brand new hat. Uh, next up, you've got Mara or Mara. Uh, 
Let's Cut the Crap and Go Hook Up. I love the name of that record. There's a, there's a song on here called Formula, Cola, and Dollar Draft. That's a fantastic record, and these, these guys are great. And then last but not least, Nadine. Nadine, uh, it's hard to describe them, a little bit like the fabulous Canadian band Blue Rodeo. Uh, Closer is a great uh, opener. Um, Out on a Limb is almost like a long-lost Neil Young song, uh, but these guys are fantastic, and if you don't know them, check out Nadine, okay? Uh, the last thing, the last item is First Americana album I owned, and it depends on how we're looking at it, right? It could have been, could have been The Birds, it could have been Buffalo Springfield, could have been Nashville Skyline, could have been John Wesley Harding. I mean, we it wasn't called Americana then, but those records, they all have songs at least, and, uh, and records uh, that fall squarely into the Americana category. Um, I think the first record that I went and sought out that wasn't rock or prog or jazz or folk or something like that uh, would have been this record right here. And what a great note to go out on. This is John Hartford's Aeroplane. Uh, this is progressive bluegrass. I, I guess uh, the term that we came up with for it would be new grass. Uh, before this record, bluegrass was pretty buttoned up. I mean, you'd see the guys in suits and cowboy hats and bolo ties and cowboy boots, and it was all pretty reverential. Uh, John Hartford came along and brought some of that hippie counterculture uh, uh, humor, uh, but absolutely a traditionalist when it comes to the music. His work on this record with Tut Taylor, the great Norman Blake, and the fabulous Vassar Clements, uh, this has to be uh, probably the first Americana record that I ever purchased and remains to this day one of my favorites. So that's it. No more questions, no more music, no more honorable mentions. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming and checking out, hanging out. I appreciate, Sam, uh, you starting this thread. It's been a lot of fun. I love talking about this music. I probably could have gone on and on and on. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see you next time.